You know, it's been about 10 years since you could have a political discussion in Boulder City without bringing up the subject of Boulder Creek. And while lots of people seem rather justly to be growing a little tired of the discussion, let's talk about it for a few more minutes. How do you see Boulder Creek at this point? Well, Boulder Creek is without question a very big liability on the community, isn't it? I think everybody realizes that. How do we address it, I think, is what we don't agree on. Uh, I've never been in favor of selling lots around the golf course, and I discussed that a little bit ago, because I never felt that we could guarantee that the golf course was going to be there. And if you sell lots around the golf course, there, they should be lots around the golf course, not out in the middle of a field on some particular day. But I think that I can envision, really, that we're going to be forced to make a decision on Boulder Creek as to whether to keep it open or keep or close it. And, uh, but I don't think that's a decision that should be made by the council. It should definitely be made by the community. I would envision that we're going to be going to the community with a plan to either close the course or keep it open. We'll give the community the choice. And if we do propose to close it, we'll propose a plan that will tell how it's going to be closed. We're not just going to one morning walk in and turn the water off. Uh, I think that there's a lot of, of potential in that area for beautiful homes. Without the golf course, there's still some lakes. There's a lot of other things that could be used in a very, very upscale subdivision. And I would have no problem with that. And I think that that's going to be the kind of proposal that will go to the community, is keep it open, and here's what it's going to cost us. Close it, and then convert it into this project, whatever that project turns out to be. Well, yeah, that gets into the, into the issue of does the community have accurate information on Boulder Creek. I know Mayor Tobler spent a lot of time working on the monthly monitoring reports. Do you think they ad ad adequately reflect the financial status of Boulder Creek now? I think, and, and, I, and these are things that I need to, to find out about once I'm elected because I think I can get information then that, I can't, that I'm not comfortable with now. No, I think they've skewed the figures to, to the best of their ability to make, it's been very important to the city to make Boulder Creek look as good as it possibly can. I think in many cases they've really gone a little bit far on it. I don't think it honestly is doing as well as they'd like us to think it is. You know, one of the things they've done, and one of the, one of the main sources of income for the second water line was selling water to Boulder Creek. Well, now the water that they give to Boulder Creek is given basically to them at the city's cost, so the city derives absolutely no income at all from that water. But they've done that to make Boulder Creek look better. And uh, so, yeah, I, I think that what, I think the council is going to be forced to really be practical when it comes to Boulder Creek, and if they do go to the community with a proposal, they have to go to them with correct figures. Let's, let's spend a minute talking about the community college. That's where we're at today. Uh, uh, you, as a matter of fact, you donated the facility to the community college. You came to Boulder City. And what's the current status of it? Yeah, well, you know, it was almost 15 years ago now, which is almost hard to believe. But my wife and I, after the New Life people moved out of here, the building sat empty for a couple of years. And uh, I, it just seemed that it, it was a very waste. So I contacted the community college at that point in time, and they came out and looked at it, and they thought, yeah, that could really have a facility here. So we agreed to actually lease it to them, and their lease payments are a dollar a year. And they've had it now for 15 years. There's been a lot of publicity recently about them leaving the facility. I've talked with the community college president, and he has assured me that before they make a decision to leave, we will talk. And that their main concern is that, it doesn't, that, that there's no liability financially for the community college to keep the building open. Uh, so, and, and I think, and we haven't been able to get these figures yet, but I think the deficit here, or their actual cost of keeping it open, uh, is, is relatively a small number. Uh, because they do have a good attendance as far as uh, classes and things like that are concerned. And since the publicity came out about them possibly closing, there's been a lot of interest of other, other organizations in town using the building. So I have high hopes that it will be a cooperative effort between the uh, community college and the community, and I think it'll stay here in one way, one form or another. Well, one of the other uh, large facilities in town you, you own is the Arco gas station. I wonder if you could update us a little bit on that. Well, I'm glad you asked me about that because people do wonder, I'm sure. Uh, my brother and I purchased the Arco station, and that's of course right at the corner of Nevada Highway and Buchanan Street. 
And uh, people, when they have a chance to ask me, say, well, what are you going to do with it? And I said, well, we aren't going to do anything with it for at least two years because when we purchased it, we purchased it with a lease to British Petroleum and they have the property leased for the next two years. Uh, they are required as part of their lease agreement to remove the building. And we're working with them now and I believe we've got an agreement that even though they were going to keep wait until the end of the lease to remove the building, I foresee now that they're going to remove the building within the, within the next month or so. So at least we'll go that far. And uh, I think once the building is, is removed and the land is, is leveled, people can mo realize more of what the potential is. So I would think that we're going to have a much better chance of some development on that corner after the building's gone. All right. Well, that'll improve the town, certainly. Mm -hmm. Well, we're nowhere near exhausting all the interesting issues confronting Boulder City, but we've, we're, we intended to try and keep this short, this short. So why don't you take a few minutes and tell us what you think is most important in the upcoming election? Well, hopefully we just covered most of those. <laughs> but but not, my concern, and, the, and basically the reason I'm running, is because I feel that the city needs some, some person or persons on the council with really good business experience. And that's not the case. I think Roger Tobler, the mayor, does a pretty good job. I think, I think he looks at many things in a business way. But I don't think this is the case with the other two members that comprise the majority of the council now. Uh, so I think that we're going to be, you know, each day now as we read about the financial situation, not only in Boulder City, but in the state and, and, in, the, and, and in the whole country, things are not getting better. And I think that we ought to have to face the fact that our income, our taxable income from the state is not going to be even what we're projecting it to be now. So we're going to be forced into taking hard looks at what really we can do with the amount of money that we have to spend. Uh, in as much as uh, that, that about 60 or 65 percent of the general fund goes to wages, we, we have to address wages in some way or other. I have no idea at this point just how that can be done because there are contracts and such involved. But I think that that the unions and such that are involved with this will have to will have to sit down with them and will have to come to some compromise. Uh, I know it, we're not the only city or government agency in Nevada that's doing that. We're all going to be forced into doing it. But the other thing I think that's going to be most important other than almost more important than the financial is to have a city council and a city staff that work together and that, that, and that are not at each other's throats as they are at this point in time. Now I'm not pointing fingers at anybody because I think there's plenty of pointing to be done in every direction. But I think that this needs to change and I honestly think that I can be the catalyst to make that change because I'm not going in with any preconceived ideas of working with or without any of the people involved. I want to work with them all. And I think I can work with them all. So that's really where I, that's where I am and I think those are the two major issues. And the other we can work out. But it'll take the it'll take the community's understanding and cooperation for the next couple of years. Because with the mistakes the city has made, plus the way the economy has gone, we have some very serious decisions to make and some decisions that people are not going to like. Well, once again, Bill, thanks for taking the time to have this discussion, and thanks for your continued service to Boulder City. Our town would seem to be at a bit of a crossroads, and the upcoming election will be critical to the future of Boulder City. So my message to the viewers is simple. Whether you agree with Bill Smith or not, get out there and vote on April 7th. It's important.